I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. I thought I'd put this to bed. I thought I'd, I thought I'd managed to, you know, shut him up. I just went on YouTube here. I literally have just gone on YouTube. And up in the corner here, you can see this. The prog corner versus, not Andy Edwards, just evil. And then it says, my response to Andy Edwards from the prog corner. It came out an hour ago. And it's already got 40, 471 views. You know why it's got all those views? Because it's about me. That's why. And here he is. Now, I'll tell you a little secret about YouTubers. When they do reaction videos, right, they do watch the video before, right? You do, you, you're not going to just go in cold and not know what the hell's going to happen. So you watch it, then you have a think about it, and then you react. Nobody's reacted. I mean, this is the whole thing about reaction videos. It shouldn't be called reaction videos. They should be called second watches, you know, because that, that was reacting. But here I am reacting. I promise you, I promise to you, to the lords and gods of Prague, I promise you that I have only just seen this. I was literally filming one. And I, I, anyone who saw my video about driving cars will notice that I had a car thing in the background going on. And I switched it off and it came back up to here. And there it is. Look how angry he is, that bloody Scott Lardo, whatever he's called. Scott Lardé. I don't even know how you pronounce his surname. It could be Lady. In fact, it probably is. So Scott Lady. You once, twice, three times a Scott Lady. Right. Um, he has responded to my response to his video. So I'll give you some background here in case you don't know about this terrible debacle that's going on. Is um, I did a video, and it was my video, it didn't involve anybody else where I looked at the most 10 overrated drummers. And at number one, I put Neil Peart. I didn't say he was a bad drummer. So he's a very good drummer, but he's not the best drummer in the world, like the prog fans say. And he comes on and he questions me over about four hours with a bunch of other prog nerds going on and on about it, right? So I reacted to that and I gave him a good what's for. So he is now coming back. Now, this is becoming a theme and I will pursue this to the end, right? Shall we click on it and see what's going on? I'm quite scared. Sure, and interior design. Oh, a proper reaction video, you see. It's, I'm not, I haven't lined it up or anything. Skip ad. Greetings, salutations, respect and love. I am Scott. You are in the prog corner, and today. I'm not. Oh man. I'm not in the prog corner. You're in the prog corner, and I'm going to box you into that prog corner if you carry on like this, Scott. It's been a long time coming. I am in a long-standing feud with a guy you probably know by the name of Andy Edwards. Oh, this guy has his own YouTube channel, and he's... Of course they know who I am. Coming after me, man. I We can't have that. We've got to protect our dignity and uh, the sanctity of the prog corner. And Andy, I'm coming after you today, but I'm not going to be doing it willy-nilly like you did. Just trying to, you know, go through one of my videos and dissect it it doesn't make any sense yeah you are the king of clickbait absolutely and i'm here to tell you what's he mean by that the king of clickbait what's he mean by that you know right i run a progressive rock channel i have done the top 10 biscuits i have done the great mustaches in in the history of progressive rock i have done um the scotch egg and its cultural importance all these videos are very very important right that I am not doing these for views at all. Some of you may notice I've got a moustache today. You know why? Because I'm harnessing the energy of the moustache, which many people in rock and roll have done and many people will do in the future. Because I'm ready for this guy with his clickbaity titles. Every time I do a clickbaity title, he copies it. You down, brother. Yeah, I know you're doing this full-time. I have a full-time job. Right? I can't be just thinking about YouTube all the time like some people. And I've only been doing this 31 months, man. You know, I'm a relative newcomer to this. So the fact that I'm making these kind of waves, living rent free inside your brain, kind of gives me a little bit of satisfaction. I'm not going to lie. But first things first. Um, yeah, first, I just can't believe that you uh, would take me to task about my intro. Come on, man. You know you're just jealous. Everybody wants an intro as good as mine. Everybody. Uh, but I came up with it. I should trademark greetings, salutations, respect, and love. Why would he want to trademark it? Who's going to steal that? I mean, he look, this bloke, look at him. Scott Lady is 
a hippie, right? And he wants to he wants to spread love. That's what he wants to do. And he thinks he can do that just by having his catchphrase that he's going to trademark. No one's going to nick your catchphrase, right? Because the hippies are few and far between. They're dropping out. They're all dead. They're all too old and dead, right? Your days are numbered, Scott. You need to get more, more with it like me, you know, and, 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 and appeal to the more the 50-year-old end of the market. Because it's brilliant, it's genius, and I came up with that, and you didn't. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, you're attacking us about our defense of Neil Peart. This is ridiculous. One of the greatest musicians, one of the greatest drummers of all time. So, yeah, you called me to task on that, and I'm called. Did you see that sniff then? He was halfway through the sentence, and then suddenly we got, <sniffs> what's he been up to? What's he up to to get this amount of energy on his videos? <sniffs> I mean, look at him. Do you think he's ever indulged in the old... <laughs> you know, I never have. Not with a nose like this. You know, it's 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 um it, it's instant overdose for me if I go anywhere near the powdery, you know, um, marching powder. You know, if I ever do that with this hooter, I'm in trouble. So I have always abstained from that sort of malarkey. Right, let's keep... Shall we carry on? Calling you back to task. I'm reacting to your reaction, brother. It ain't right. It ain't cool. You know, every drummer's different, right? Neil Peart probably wouldn't have fit in modern vision. Right, I want to point something out here. When he first said Neil Peart, he went Neil Peart like that. Go back and have a look. He went Neil Peart. And the second time he said it, he's now said Neil Peart. He is pronouncing it in the way you would describe um, a lady's upper regions, you know. Or, 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 or you could, it could be a man's bottom. I don't want to be sexist. And I, I don't think that's respectful at all to Neil Peart. I say Neil Peart, right? Because that's the right way of saying it. He knows it's the wrong way, but he can't help it. You know why? He's fair with a prog fan. He doesn't really know how to say it. And how now he's getting a bit worked up. He's gone back to Peart. Uh, but, uh, you know, some players just work better with other uh, bands. Yeah, Bill Bruford wouldn't have worked in the Ramones, right? It's just the way it is. Uh, I, I don't think Buddy Rich would have been any good in Rush. It's just, yeah, come on, man. But, uh, you know, he you attack have. Neil Parrott. He's not around to defend himself, man. Uh, but I am. So what do you do? You spend most of your time attacking my panel. Uh, so what he's trying to claim here now, which is absolutely ridiculous, really, is that Neil Peart approaching the end of his life and trying to put things, you know, in, in the in the right place, said, um, um, right, you know, make sure you get the royalties. Don't let Alex and Geddy diddle you. You know, I wrote the lyrics. We, we get 50% and I get the, the other six of the music, you know. So just remember that. So he's got all that down. He's got his lawyers in there. And then he goes, um, and also, if um, my... Um, uh, if my personality or my, my reputation, that's the word I'm looking for, if my reputation is ever besmirched by anybody, can you get Scott Lady, you know, dude looks like a lady, can you get Scott dude looks like a lady to uh, <laughs> to uh, to protect the honour of, of, of um, Neil Peart? My honour, the Peart honour. And then they said, yeah, but the trouble is he doesn't know how to say your name, does he? And they said, oh, yeah, that, forget about that then. And he's still carried on like he is. Come on, Scott. Get, give me something Leave I can get my hands on. Alone. You know, you're attacking little old Wayne from Alberta, Canada, just because his head is really low. I don't know what that is, by the way. That's a good point. Why is his head so low? See, he's agreeing oh, with me. a little high. Sometimes you're supposed to keep your head centered. No, you're but, not. You know. Right. Well, I, I, I can't stick this. Right. You should not have your head dead center in a camera. I'm going to show you this. This is this is this is why I'm a professional YouTuber. He's a fair weather, you know, amateur YouTuber. If I put myself in the middle of this shot now, if I can, right? So I am now smack in the middle. You see that I'm smack in the middle. What do I look like? I look like a fool, right? Anybody who's had a training in any sort of art needs that you need knows that you need to get up into the top. And what I do is I just try and get it so that though my hair is just touching the top for the for the aesthetic pleasure that that gives. And what that does, it suggests that there's life going on outside the thing. If I'm down here like this, it's not, look at it, it's not right. 
You know, now Scott, he is inadvertently wearing his sort of pothead pixie hat here. Wherever he puts it, I mean, he could be right at the bottom of the camera and that hat's still going to reach the top of the camera. What's under that hat? I do not know. I think it's a small creature that's operating Scott. That's what I think it is. Let's just get that straight for aesthetic reasons, right? Like that thing that's in the Men in Black, you know? Because he, he can't be for real, can he? He's too animated for a man of his age. Oh, yeah, but we said that was because the older. Oh, Wayne, Wayne alone, man, he's a good dude. Uh, he doesn't have all your knowledge and whatnot, but he's getting there. And then you come after the professor. You come after Brett Bristow from Emerald City Council. The only credit you gave him is that, yeah, he's some kind of Neil Morse expert. Oh, he's way more than that, Andy Edwards. I never said he was a Neil Morse expert. Who wants to be a Neil Morse expert? This Eric Bristow, whoever he's on about, you know. You know, he, he, he should... <laughs> For those of you in America, Eric Bristow is a darts player. And uh, I can't remember what he said his first name was. Well, from the Emerald City. What's this? The bloody, you know, darts player from the Wizard of Oz. Is that who I'm supposed to think knows about um, Neil Peart? I, I can't say much more here. He's not giving me much to work on. Come you on, listen Scott. to that Emerald City Council album, and you tell me if that's not better than the last Rain album. Oh, <gasps> oh that, now he's laid the gauntlet down. This is more like it, Scott. Now, now you know... This is better. Look at the little smile on his face. He's thrashed around for I don't know how many minutes. Um, like, uh, well, quite a few. I can't see the time. He's thrashed around trying to get something going. When I did my video, it was insult after insult after insult after insult. I had a go at their houses. I had a go at them being smelly. I had a go at what they look like. I, I had a go at them being babies. I had a go that they, fact, they were American. Below the belt, over and over like this, because I know what I'm doing. He thrashed around, thrashed around for minutes until he's actually, I, I respect him for this one. I got a bit, I have forgotten about it now. I'm talking, I can't remember. What did he say? What, what did he just insult me with? Oh, yeah, by saying some band that's, um, some American prog band's better than my British prog band, which cannot be the case, because it's never happened. But uh, we'll carry on. But look at the little smile on his face. He's, he's really pleased with that one there. Really, look at the little smile there. He's quite endearing. Look at him. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Yeah. Little smile there. Very good. Great teeth. Americans have great teeth, don't they? Great, better than mine, aren't they? He's, 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 they're much whiter. Aren't they? Maybe I need to get mine whitened. These are very white. All Americans do have white teeth, though, don't they? It's to admit, but it's it's the truth. You come after Lauren, saying he had a big old head. Uh, <laughs> Jack Black, come on. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just making me sound brilliant, isn't he? You had a, you had a go in for having a big old head. <laughs> I never mentioned the size of his head. You see, what I do with the way I work is I put these things into 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 your head, Scott. You think I said this stuff about Neil Morse? I never did. You think I said something about his big head? Rewind it back. I never said something about his big head. That's you. You think he's got a big head. Everyone who's watching it is thinking, oh, my God, look at the size of that bloke's head. It's huge. But nobody wants to say it. And now he's come out Freudian slip. That's what's happened here. I said he looked like Jack Black, you fool. That's Lauren Murphy. He's a legend. Leave him alone. I do... I, I noticed that you kind of left Matt Brown alone. You detected a uh, musician. I uh, did. Musician that's true. You detected other musicians. Yes. You left them alone. You I did. Some space. I Drummer that. knows what he's Honestly, talking about. He appreciates that. But the long and the short of this is, man, you should be thanking me. Not just you, Andy Edwards, but all of you guys should be thanking me. Pete Pardo should be thanking me. Uh, Barry Robinson should be thanking me. Now, this is more interesting because he's now expanded out into the little network of, um, of, of um, you know, progressive rock type YouTubers. And he's gone to the big names. You no, know, Pete Pardo they, and, uh, and and Barry Robertson, Robinson. They, they've got way more subscribers than even I have. I've got more than him, probably three times more, but I haven't got anywhere near those guys. So, um, you know, he's, he's, he's brought in the big fish and I respect that. And I really do feel like I need to join forces with him a little bit at this point. But I'm not going to, because he might be trying to lure me into a false sense of security by bringing them in. Let's see what he's got to say about these. Me, Notes Review should be thanking me. All you clowns need to be thanking me, because I came on the scene and I forced you guys to get better at what you were doing. You know I did. You know I made you think about what you were doing and why your videos were boring and how you could spice them up. That was because of me. Absolutely. But 
it's it's a two-way street andy you know i learned a few things from you you are the king of clickbait i certainly learned uh, all about that from you barry i learned a lot from him man his thumbnail game is just so strong pete pardo i learned a lot from him you know the level of professionalism and yeah i did learn something from andy too i learned about how to be the king of the clickbait you got only I kind of segregate my clickbaity stuff into what I call clickbait. We, I'm going to try. Do it all the time I'm going to try and you know, I'm, put I'm my bottom there because that's basically yeah, what you're doing now, isn't it? Is your full -time you're kissing. Job, so He's kissing. All right, but, uh, He's kissing. He's uh, kissing. He's got his big cool. tongue out. His big prog tongue. Mm, 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 mm. I do appreciate that you left our mamas out of it. Uh, <laughs> that is a, that is a good thing right there. I did leave the mamas out of it. The mothers weren't mentioned, right? I don't think there'd be much point in mentioning Scott's mother. What? Can you shut the door, please? Shut the door. <sighs> Scott, he's over for tea at the moment. I told him I was going to do this and he wasn't happy. But uh, he's come around to wash my car and he always does it on a Sunday. Always comes around and washes my car for me. I give him a bit of money, give him a few tips. But, uh, um, yes, I wonder how old Scott's mother is, because I reckon Scott has got to be 80 years old, hasn't he? I mean, look at him. He's got to be 80 years old. You know the hair, that is part of the hat. Takes that off, he's as bald as a coot. So I'm not going to mention your mother, because uh, I don't think that you uh, want me to dig up stuff from the past. From the distant past. What is in Britain, but in the U.S., you uh, you come after my mom, you're in big, big trouble. I will never do that. You also put some claims out there about Americans being soft. Oh, dude, come on, man! I'm wearing my Top Gun shirt today, proving you know a country that gives you ice. Top Gun. Perhaps the most camp film ever made. He is offering as male, you know, sort of male power and authority and sexuality. That's what he is offering. Now, Americans, if they want to get all that, they have to bring in Arnold Schwarzenegger from Austria. They have to bring in a European at least, right? If they've got a villain, if they're going to fight a villain, always has to be an English person, right? And his idea of offering, you know, sort of the toughness of America is by wearing a Top Gun t-shirt overlaid with some lovely, you know, emerald green beads. That's not soft. How could that possibly be soft? You know, the special relationship between the UK and Britain is a joke. It's a farce. It's a one-way street. America is the dominant force in every single conceivable, measurable uh uh, category you can come up with from uh, economic development. I'll come up with a category for you. Progressive rock. How about that? To military uh, strength, to cultural uh, importance. Uh, we punch above our weight and we're all... Cultural importance. So what would that be? Mickey Mouse? What would it be? Right. Take the black people out of it. You haven't got much, have you? Take Louis Armstrong and James Brown and all that lot out of it. You haven't got much. You never treated them that well, did you? And take that out of it. What have you got culturally in America? Come on. I'll just say the word Shakespeare. Yeah. Shakespeare. We've got the Beatles, Monty Python, um, James Corden. I mean, look what a success he was in, in your country, don't that James Corden, the fat one. You know, so don't have a go at us about that culture. You know, so I don't appreciate the fact that you said that I... My dad used to tell me a story. When he was a pilot in the war, he got shot down and taken prisoner. You know why he got shot down and taken prisoner? Because we were the only country in the whole world standing up to the Nazis. 
That's why. And what were the Americans doing? Oh, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get involved. I might get around. I might have to fight someone. You know, and then the Japanese come and bomb me at Pearl Armour. That's what we should biggest kick up the arse ever. Oh, then I suppose, we, well, we have to fight the, you know, they, they've declared war on us now. Um, that's the truth. Right? That's the truth. Um, God, who is an Englishman, has placed on this, this bit of footage of the Battle of Britain. The most bitter winter. And there's barely anything to eat. Watch. Watch and learn. Almost died. But then the parcels arrive from the Red Cross, full of food and medical supplies. I wonder where the Red Cross comes from. I think of Dad, seeing those boxes, knowing that people cared. And I think of all those the Red Cross movement have helped since then. Yes, helped. Wherever people are vulnerable, you see their emblem. Yeah. Usually countries America's got involved in. Comfort when it's needed most. Hope when all seems lost. When I wrote my will... I remembered what the British Red Cross did for Dad. That's why I decided to leave them a gift. You lot are all now old. You should world, be writing I'll your will. You know, you might not have long now. You're all old. Sign up to the British Red, Red Cross. Cross. It's a worthy Red thing. I'm glad this more, came on. Including how I'm to glad. Or amend your will for free. They do good work, they do. They do good work, the old British Red Cross. Smell bad. Well, you know, it might be accurate, but I still don't appreciate it. <laughs> And I'm going to turn the tables on you. You take a look at the the, the economic uh, council for uh, that's all you need. And they come up. Oh, that's nice. Lists, right? They take the top 28 developed countries in the world. Not listening. They come up with lists on usage of certain products oh. per capita. And I'm here to tell you Ted that Baker. the UK ranks in the bottom of three in both soap and toothpaste usage. So take that, Andy Edwards. Maybe we should be talking instead of a mental health all the time. Maybe we should be talking about the UK's dental health. Maybe that'll be a little bit more after. I've already mentioned but it, mate. I want to thank the UK, not just for delivering and uh, giving us uh, Andy Edwards, you know, a great <laughs> punching bag and a perfect the target for my shots here. Today. Oh, I smell but lovely at the moment, you know. Language. We appreciate it. Are you we still there? You guys speak it 100% wrong. Uh, we speak the correct version of the language. Absolutely. There was a study done by Oxford not too long ago where they, you know, took Chaucer and Shakespeare as, you know, guides to how Elizabethan English uh, actually sounded using rhyming, uh, you know, stuff like that. Trying to figure it. He is genuinely struggling now, isn't he, with this with this insult. This, this insult is far too complex. I'm lost already. It's got Chaucer in it. And it's got the Oxford people in Oxford. Who are these people in Oxford? And they're checking out how to say things in English. And he's now trying to, going to make the point that Americans know how to speak English better than the English. The word for English is English. You know why? Because English is English. It's the English language invented by the English that the English people speak. And we can say however we want, because if we change it, then that's how you say it. You Americans have had it because, of course, all the good bits that you have in your country come from England. It comes from our great British philosophers who came up with your Bill of Rights and your your Declaration of Independence, you know, as you, um, once supported by this great country, were then allowed by, you know, George the III, whoever it was, to go off and do your own thing. And you've done all right. There's a bit of a mess here and there. You've done all right. They determined that the people that spoke the closest English was in South Carolina. Yeah, so take that. But I do really want to thank the UK, not just for your language, but also for your jurisprudence, the Magna Carta and all that stuff. Thank you so much. That's right. Uh, we don't have a king, so obviously we took what you guys figured out and went one better. Just said all uh, that. And I do want to thank you guys for Prague Rock. Uh, absolutely developed in the UK to an expert. I'm quite enjoying this, Dad, but it doesn't feel like he's having a go at me. But Come on, let's be honest. If you take a look at what Prague really is, it's rock and roll with classical influences. Well, rock and roll was developed and born and invented in the U.S. And classical music, I don't know, name great British classical composers. I, Benjamin. Thomas Tallis, Handel, Gustav Holst. These all sound like foreign people to me. I don't carry on anyway. Edward Elgar, um, Benjamin Britten, um... Uh, uh, <laughs> Brahms is he British I don't know sounds like he is um, Gilbert and Sullivan 
Um, uh, and other ones, all sorts of British composers that are famous. Come on, you can't say this. Uh, William Walton. Um, Delius, was he English? Was he French? I don't know. Who else is there? Come on, get some British composers going on. You can't get some early ones. There's quite a few 20th century composers. Ray Fawn Williams. No, he's good. Um, who else? Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Does he count? You got Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, who else is a good composer that's British? There's a whole host of them, really. Um, there's um, Peter Maxwell Davis. There's one. There's one for you. Peter Maxwell Davis. He's good. Um, who else? Um, you've got um, Hoyland. John Hoyland or whatever his name is. I've done Thomas Tallis, haven't I? Who else have we got? A whole host of them, really. I mean, Mozart, he was only any good because he came and lived in the UK for a short while. Uh, so that's how he got good. It would have been rubbish if he hadn't done that. And he's one of the better ones, isn't he, Mozart? Um, who else have you got? Um, of course, there's all, there's all like, um, other ones as well. There's lots of them, lots of them. Like, for example, um, uh, um, Like Kate Bush, she's a composer, and she's English. Now, who would you be rather looking at right now? Scott Lady, you know, once, twice, three times a lady, or Kate. I'm gonna put Kate there, just to remind you of what our can, country can produce if we want. I want, it to, I want you to be able to see her a bit better, that's it. I don't really like how she's positioned next to Scott. Let me just move around there. Right, so, um, how do we play this? I've, I've forgotten. Oh yeah, press that, don't I? Right? Andrew Lloyd Webber. There aren't that many, man. Uh, most of the greats came from the US or from continental uh, Europe. Great American composers. You've got um, Charles Ives. You've got Aaron Copeland. Then you've got Steve Reich and oh, all right then, just get on Germany, with it. France, Russia, Hungary, uh, Austria, Italy, Norway. Going all on for too long. Than Britain in terms of classical music. Absolutely. Let's get on with absolutely. this. And, uh, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Go on. I liked, actually. And actually. A whole bunch. I, I, I mean, I think What's going on now? There was a moment there where I really thought that was going to be I know what you mean, mate. It's called Scott Lardé's video. No point sniffing your armpit. It's not you, it's him. Oh, she's going to get water. All right, I'd like to introduce you. You know I'm not copying you. There's nobody like me at all. If anything, all you clowns have been copying me since I came on the scene. That's obvious. I mean, you look around at people's videos before I showed people's. up. People's? What about mine? After I showed up. Before the prog corner, after the prog corner. Your game had to step up. You know it did. So you are welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I don't take any of Another my Another one of those from, sticks. Yeah, and it is stick. You know, it's YouTube. It's entertainment. You know, I put these beads. I don't walk around with beads on, man. You know, obviously it's entertainment. It's stick. I put the beads on and I become a different person. Kind of, sort of, you know. Uh, I'm so, so what he's saying here now is that he wouldn't normally wear those bees in real life. But what he does to bring the entertainment into your home is before he comes on, he puts those beads on. Now, I've got to admit, when I first saw him, I thought, oh, it's just another prog YouTube. He's just going to do, oh, my God, look at those beads. They're glintily. They're glittery and gl glistening. They're twinkling in my eyes. I'm like, a, I'm, I'm like a magpie. I want to have them. I want to have the beads. I'm going to have to watch this because he's got beads. He's got beads. Oh, my God. And then I thought, what am I going to do on my YouTube? I need something glittery. I haven't got anything glittery. I've just got a normal T-shirt on. I go, oh, my God, what am I going to do with that something glittery? In, you know, drawing the magpie elements in, you know, those people who want to go and touch. I just got to touch them. I don't really want to touch them. I don't want to touch them. They're so, so glistening. See, they're glistening and bright. Glistening bright, my precious. My pre I shouldn't do that impersonation. Not with him on. It's prog golem here we've got. That's my wife about that. But it's not you I'm ripping off. Uh, the uh, careful and uh, discerned viewer will understand where my shtick comes from. doesn't come from Andy Edwards at all, man. Most of it comes from Jim Rome, actually, who you probably don't know because he's a, 
U.S. sports guy, uh, and Rachel's ghost. Uh, I took a lot of uh, what I do from Rachel and her channel. Uh, very little I took from you, Andy Edwards. Rubbish. Very, very little. Uh, but uh, another thing that you touched on in your uh, reaction to uh, my video was uh, Prague Love. And yeah, I did uh, bring two young lovers, Cody from Canada and Tara all the way in Ireland. Brought them together, Young Love, Prague Love. I am very proud of that. I think that's awesome. So good luck to Tara and Cody. Hopefully their love story will uh, last forever. And uh, then at some point you touch on show tunes. Dude, you got no right to be talking about oh, show tunes. Oh, it's just, it's just, just, it's just a big list. It's just a big list of what I went so through. I can't be arsed anymore. Stream. I am doing Oh my God, what's he done here? This has got uh, interesting. Terrible. <laughs> now I'm having to go back right. He's going to take his hat off. Don't look, don't look at his. Right? Because uh, Andy's the clown, not me, right? And, uh... You know, everybody says, oh, don't do that ending. It's terrible. It's awful. But what did Andy do at the ending of his? What What was that? Three minutes of making noises. And uh, I, I don't know what that was. Was Was he mocking me or something? Uh, either way, it was a bad look. You know, you had the spit coming out of the mouth and all that kind of stuff. It's just terrible. But, uh, you know, he's talking about his inner demons and stuff. Well, you know what, Andy? Maybe you're the one that needs saving, man. I think I might have to change my outro. So we're going to give it a try here for the first time uh, because uh, you're not the only weird one on YouTube, Andy. You do not have a corner on the market. And if you think you're weirder than I am... Right, so this is where the gauntlet was laid down at the end of the video, you know, because um, it takes an experienced YouTuber to really be weird. You try it, you know, get the camera on and do it, you know, and you're in a, um, you know, self-consciousness and just boring conservativeness you will find will be uh, stopping you that from finding what is truly strange so now scott is going to try and out weird me uh you haven't spent enough time in the prog corner uh you're not weird at all you're just a regular guy trying to be weird we know that we know who the weirdo is it's me so let's try this new one out let's try this new outro anyway tomorrow on the channel guys uh, I'm going to be reviewing the new Focus album, Focus 12. Uh, that's going to be awesome. And then Sunday, the Sunday prog stream, I am doing the top 10 Uriah Heap songs with the great Pete Pardo in tow. It's going to be an awesome show. Anyway, I love you guys. Peace in the Middle East. Free the Tibet. Free the Ukraine. Free everything. And God save Andy Edwards. Oh, save Andy Edwards. I don't think that boy's got the cancer, but he still needs to come to America. Make that boy swim. He needs some exercise, that Andy Edwards. Edwards. Bring him over to America, make him swim, and then we'll get them good doctors on him. See what's going on. Check under the trunk. Check under the hood. See, there's something wrong with that guy. I know there is. Our prayer warriors are standing by. Right. All I want to draw attention to here is how he has put this hat on, which has the word fiery. And now, look how red he's gone. All right. He is, he is embodied what his hat says. That's quite impressive, that is. I, 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 but I, I, I think if you're going to be weird, you never want, especially of gentlemen of our age, to, to get that close to, you know, some sort of stroke or anything, which I, I, I am worried in his desire to outweird me that he's just pushing himself towards bad health here, you know. So, I mean, Scott, calm it down a little bit, mate. He thinks he's a somebody. He thinks he's a famous drummer because he played with Robert Plant one time. I don't know this guy, but thoughts and prayers to Andy Edwards anyway. And then we're going to drink some poison. Thoughts and prayers. Absolutely not going to work. But you know what's going to work, boys and girls. Only one thing's going to work for that Andy Edwards. Bust out the rattlesnakes. Woo, yeah. Oh, make Andy dance with them snakes. Oh, yeah. That's what's going to cure him. Oh, them rattlesnakes are going to bring Andy right back. Right as rain. I love you guys. I'll see you. Peace. Right. Um, I don't want to say much at this point, but it might be worth going back and actually checking the ending of my video uh, just to see. And then you, you can you can decide yourself which was the most weird. Uh, that that looked like you know that looked like sort of a kindergarten level weird for me, but you know he he is an amateur YouTuber. You know he's 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 get, he's coming on, isn't he? He's coming on. I've got to be honest. You know he's he's done very well. I think very very well. He has. 
and uh, we must give him the credit for that, you know. Um, but uh, he's just got a lot to learn, that's all. That's, he's got a lot to learn. And, uh, and Scott, if you're watching this, which I know you are because you get all your ideas from here, um, if you want to get, you know, just give us a call or a message and I can advise you on, on where to go next because I think you're floundering around a little bit. Anyway, that was my reaction to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it mine is like twice the length of his, you know. I'll tell you why. It's because content just pours out of me. I am a content maker. I am like a nuclear reactor of content. If you put a camera up, then I will just exude content out of every single pore. And not bad smelling content like his, but beautiful, lovely flower smelling content. The sort of content that makes middle-aged progressive rock men cock their nose up in the air and breathe it in, taking them off into a parallel world where all their youthful dreams are reenacted. That's what I do on this channel, right? And um, the poetry and lyricism and with, in, with, with, within which I can, you know, I sometimes stumble with words, but, you know, if you look at the poetry and the wisdom that is embodied on this channel, you will see that it's just another, another level, another level of execution, right? Now, the only thing that um, is, um, is worrying me a little bit is, is, is the, my lack of, lack of hat work, right? So I'll just put that to there. And uh, we'll see how this goes. Just hold your horses, will you? Now, I want you to, you know, I want you to look at Scott there with his, uh, his fiery Kentucky fine iron, what is it, Burger King hat on. Now, I haven't planned this. You know I haven't planned this, right? But I am now going to return... And I have pulled this out of nowhere. Think about this. Right. I haven't even tried. I haven't even tried. What can I say? If I want to do hat work, I can do hat work. I'm an expert on YouTube hat work, in fact. There, another look for you. How about that one? Yeah, all sorts of... You know, I can get all sorts of... Um, I can get, get all sorts of looks out of this one. That's just the one, the one ear down. Say I was talking to you, and I was talking I wanted the other ear to come down, I'd just do that. Right. I think I've proved my point. Um, Shall we finish up there? Bye bye. Switch this light off. I'll go open the curtains. It's, uh, it's my daughter's birthday, so I'm going to go downtown, down, downstairs. Uh, my mum's just arrived and I'm going to uh, wish her a happy birthday. Um, if you want to uh, uh, wish my daughter happy birthday, I don't really want to say a name on the net because I don't like that, but you could say happy birthday to Andy's daughter and then I could show her all the lovely comments there. We are done. Hope you enjoyed this reaction video. I'm sure now he'll, he'll try and come back at me now. But um, I, I think I've, I've, always, I've held my uh, side pretty well. And I, uh, but it's, it's for you to decide. It's for you to decide, isn't it? Another look, you see? That's, that looks like, uh, that's quite good actually. I can do that one there like that. Does this come down? No, that's sewn on, isn't it? Uh, I think that's about all I get. Could I put these together? Keep the old ears. Isn't there a jazz singer that's gone for this look? What's his name? He's got that medical problem where if he doesn't wear a hat like this, his head explodes. Do you know the bloke? Got a really deep voice. It's actually quite cosy. 
but I'm sure I'm shouting now. I wonder how he sings and hears the band with this big woolly thing on his on his side here. Look at that. You see, if you do this, I'll show you something really cool now. And Scott, if you're still watching, which I bet you are, I want you to notice that people are still watching. Right, and nothing's going on. I'm just wearing a hat. You know what that's called? That's called being the best music YouTuber. Now look. Who am I? Go on, who am I? Drummer? Played in a classic rock band in the early 70s. Who am I? Who am I? Come on. You know who it is? One of the great rock drummers of all time. That's it, Ian Pace. Look at those sideboards. Look at those chops. They're like Ian Pace chops. Ch Ian Pace's chops are so incredible. The, the most important bit is that line that goes down there because without that line, it just becomes a beard and it just becomes normal. But he, he, he pushed the chop right to the limit and you can recreate that feel of, of being Ian Pace by wearing this hat. It's a wonderful thing. I'm definitely at the end of the video now. See you all. Bye.